Steve Kim for UCN. I'm here with promoter extraordinaire Bob Aaron. Bob, December 13th, you make your return back to the Cosmo. It's an interesting uh, dynamic here. There's a competing show now. I, I read Kevin Ioli's story with Golden Boy. Um, give me your thoughts, and have you talked to Oscar about that? Well, you know, uh, Oscar's in a, a, a quandary. It, 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 it's Showtime that wants to somehow put this fight uh, in Las Vegas like it will hurt me or hurt HBO, and that's their delusion. And uh, uh, I, we told Oscar, hey, if they're going to give you money to do it, take the friggin' money. <laughs> I mean, what the hell do I care if they go on December 13th, either in 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 back east or or in uh, Mandalay Bay or in Mandalay Bay? Who cares? Mm -hmm. I mean, really, who cares? How does it affect me? It doesn't. But I know that Showtime is doing it to play with either me or with HBO or both. Mm -hmm. But I told Oscar, Oscar, money is money. Take the <laughs> money. Do what they say. I mean, to put a fight on in a big arena like Mandalay Bay on December 13th, when everything is shut down in Las Vegas because of the Christmas holiday, mm -hmm. you know, the restaurants are shut and so forth, is a form of insanity. But that is something that really uh, has uh, gripped uh, Mr. Espinosa <laughs> for many years. And that is your old friend, Stephen Espinosa. Were you surprised, though? I, I know that nothing surprises you anymore, but were you surprised that Showtime, in your view, would deliberately counter-program out of what I guess is what you could call pettiness? Well, I don't know if they're kind of programming. There's only so many weeks in the year, and they got to get a date for whatever show they're going to put on. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's okay, putting it on December 13th. I mean, nobody watches Showtime anyway, so it doesn't affect uh, the ratings that HBO are going to get. Mm -hmm. Bob, as a, looking ahead to Tim Bradley's fight against Diego Chavez, if he should come out clean, in your mind, what's his big fight next year in 2015? Maybe the winner of uh, Canelo um, Cotto really? is a possibility. That's what he's talking about. And that's a fight that probably could be relatively easily made. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's a bit of an issue, though, given the fact that Tim Bradley is still, he's a muscular 47, but I wouldn't call him a big 47. Can he fight effectively above that weight class? That's what people will pay in the, to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I assume, yes, he can, but we'll have to see. Bob, December 20th, do you still have designs? I spoke to you a few days ago about it. There are issues now, I guess, with Mike Alvarado again. Is there still a possibility of Rios Alvarado late in the year? Yeah, we're checking with Mike's lawyer to see whether there would be any impediment to do that fight. And if the answer is no, that there wouldn't be an impediment, mm -hmm. we hope to get it finalized this week. Mm -hmm. Bob, going to this card, I find this to be interesting, that the Herrera fight... Uh, against Benavides is a Golden Boy top rank matchup. You, you and Oscar both stated you were going to break the Cold War for what you can do. Um, how, is it a direct edict now with you that moving forward we're going to cut the crap and just make the fights within possibility between the two companies when need be? Absolutely. I mean, I mean there was never any impediment on our side as far as doing fights with Golden Boy. Uh, the problem is you got to understand philosophy. They had a guy running the company, Richard Schaefer, who came from a European background, and a lot of the people in Europe who do business, their essence of competing is to destroy the competition. Mm -hmm. So Richard had that type of mindset. Mm -hmm. Now, the American mindset is pretty much like uh, what happened with King and myself. Uh, you compete, you compete very hard, you call each other the crazy names, <laughs> but when there's money to be made in a big fight, you sit down and you talk and you put on the fights. Mm -hmm. So Schaefer came from a totally different background and he didn't understand that in boxing, uh, that's not the way you operate. In boxing, you always look to the fact that whoever your competitor is, 
the next few months, the next year, you can do business with them. Bob, you are making Golden Boy versus top ranked fights. My question is, and I've posed this a few times, the fighters with Golden Boy that are with Al Heyman, are they eligible to be in the mix from what you know? We don't, uh, we don't concern ourselves with any of that. Mm -hmm. We, we talk to, uh, to, to uh, Oscar and Eric uh, about fighters that uh, we have spots for in fights that we're putting on. Just the way he talks to us mm -hmm. about our fighters in spots that he has, like Abrego, mm -hmm. who's fighting Saddam Ali uh, on the uh, Kovalov um, Hopkins. Hopkins card. So, you know, that's the way you do business. That's the way I do business with everybody else. And now that Schaefer's gone, uh, there's no longer an impediment to do business with Oscar or anybody else. Bob, I know that you and uh, Oscar had, had your ups and downs professionally and personally. How glad are you from a personal standpoint that based on everything that you guys have been through that you guys have patched things up recently? Well, I, you know, I, didn't, I never had anything against Oscar. You know, there were certain things that were said that were sort of stupid, but, you know, you, for, you, you forget that. That, that. that never bothers me. Mm -hmm. You know, listen, I lived with King for 20 years. I mean, so, you know, it rolls off my back. So I never really had any problems with Oscar. I, you know, we made a lot of money together when I promoted him, you know, and I always had great respect for him. And I'm glad that he's now become a businessman and is seriously conducting business. So I wish him all the best. Bob, final question regarding your December 13th. I know you've been working with HBO trying to make this happen. Is the Andy Lee, Matt Korobov show, will that be a part of this broadcast? That depends, uh, Steve. Mm -hmm. If... Uh, uh, we push through with uh, December 20. Rios Alvarado. Rios Alvarado. Then Korobov Lee goes on that card mm -hmm. as a doubleheader. If in the event that that fight does not happen, then we make a triple header on December 13th uh, at the Cosmopolitan where Korobov Lee fights on December 13th. Korobov Lee fight is made. Mm -hmm. It's committed with HBO. All the fighters are on board. Mm -hmm. The question is, does it go to the 13th or the 20th? Not whether it goes. It goes either on one of those two days. Okay, that's, this is Bob Aram, head of Top Rank. This is Steve Kim for UCN.